Hello everyone. I'm joining you from our backyard here at the Parsonage. It, it really is a wonderful and beautiful space to come back, relax, have a barbecue. But there are times when I feel weary, when I feel very uptight, I like to come out here to be in prayer, to sit back and relax. As you, as you can see in the background is our hammock. And I enjoy using it at, at times just to kind of take a deep spiritual breath and to relax. Now we're in the midst of a sermon series entitled Building on a Firm Foundation. And in building on that firm foundation, we are exploring and looking at the words of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. And we're looking at how we can apply those important words, that, that message of the kingdom, and bring it into our sphere, into our living, and into our lives. This week we're going to talk about worry. Now there's a saying or a phrase that many of us have shared with someone we know or, or we have shared it with others, and we would say, don't worry about it. I say that to, to my wife Connie all the time, don't worry about it. I say it to myself, you know, uh, under my lips. And often I say it to parishioners, don't worry about it. Have you ever had those words shared with you? Did it work? Probably not. You see, those words are easy to say, but they're very hard to put into practice. Why? Because we are inundated with anxiety and worry in our day and age. Right now, today, the knowledgeable, they worry about about it because they're afraid they may know too much. The ignorant worry because they don't know enough. The rich, they worry that the stock market will crash at any time and that their, their, their portfolios will crumble. The poor worry that they don't have enough. The old worry about death and the young, they worry about facing life. There's the worry about our COVID-19 virus and whether or, not, whether or not it will affect us. There is the worry about our political and sectarian divisions that's destroying right now our political discourse. And there is the worry about our climate about climate change as we watch the fires on the west coast of our country burn out of control we are worried we are anxious we are fearful and oftentimes that that worry and that fear becomes the defining mark in our lives because we end up constantly living with this black cloud over our head with this feeling of dread that something else is going to happen. Again, I suppose I can make that list go on and on. And you probably have some, some worries on your own personal list. But we want to look at what Jesus said about worry. Jesus wasn't telling his hearers or us not to be concerned. There's a difference between being concerned, being prudent, being prepared. There's a difference between that and anxiety, worry, and total fear. We can't, we're not called to place our heads in the sand. But what Jesus was telling everyone and he tells us today is, again, don't allow worry and anxiety be an integral part of your life where it clouds your decision making, where it clouds your relationships with others, where it clouds your relationship with God. In essence, what Jesus said in verse uh, 25 of chapter 
6. He said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Even these are the things that the Gentiles worry about. But isn't life more than food? Isn't the body more than clothing? Know ye a little faith. Think about that. Jesus says there is more to life than our worry. There is more to life than being defined by our anxiety. And that is why we hear that phrase throughout Scripture, words coming from the angels, from God, be not afraid. Jesus says, consider the lilies of the field. They do not toil, nor do they spin. But I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his riches and all of his glory was as beautiful and arrayed as one of these flowers. And if God so could, could clothe the grass of the field that's here today and gone tomorrow, think of how much God is going to clothe you. He meant that. So what Christ wants people to do is not to define who they are or their relationships by what they fear or the anxiety that is ruling their hearts. Again, worry plays a major role in our society today. It affects us not only mentally, and spiritually, but it affects us physically, too. There are so many illnesses that's tied into anxiety, that's tied into worry. Sometimes our worry can lead us to ulcers, high blood pressure, and also heart attacks. So what I, I want to invite you to try to do is to slow yourself down as the sermon title says don't worry be happy a few years ago um, the psychologist Richard Carlson wrote a best-selling book that that's entitled don't sweat the small stuff now sadly Carlson died of a heart attack only at the age of 45 but he got the idea for his book one day while driving his six-year-old to school. And they got into rush hour traffic. They spent 40 minutes creeping along, along the freeway. Then they sat in the car. And Carlson's daughter looked out of the window at the other cars and the other people creeping along. And finally she said this, Daddy, why are all the people so mad? Her statement caused Carlson to begin thinking about all those people who were stuck in traffic. And he realized they didn't have to be grim. They didn't have to be anxious. And he just came to, to believe and to, to realize that in order to be happy, we need to shift our, our, our paradigm. We need to, to look at the fact that it is the simple things in life that brings us the most joy or should bring us happiness. And he realized that people were focused on so many other things, on the trivial things of life, that was bringing anxiety and, and, and fear and sometimes anger into the way they live. What about yourself? 
Do you sweat the small stuff? Does it take just a little thing to, to just allow you to explode? I think if we're all honest with ourselves, the answer would be yes. Because we have been struck, uh, uh, stuck in traffic. We have been having a, a bad day at work. And sometimes, though, that small stuff piles up. It piles up until we, it comes to a breaking point. But is there a way for us to let go of all those worries, of all those trials, of all those tribulations, and to lay them aside and give them to God? That's what Jesus was saying. Is that we have our priorities all whacked out. We define our happiness slowly by, by all of the external things that are that's happening all around us. Rather than quieting ourselves and listening to that still small voice of God that reminds us of what truly is important. So what does Jesus want us to do? Well, Jesus wants us to slow down. Slow down. And to be mindful of our lives, of what truly is important. Have you ever been in a situation that in the midst of your busyness, in the midst of your work obligations, that you forgot about your family? You forgot about God? I, I believe if we're honest, the answer is yes. There have been times in my pastoral work that I get so preoccupied, so caught up in all of the external things and putting out fires and trying to keep everybody happy that I forgot what was truly important. And what's truly important is my relationship with God, with Christ, with my family, with my children, with my friends and community. It, when we turn our thoughts, over to God, to Christ. He gives us an opportunity to see what is important. So I want to invite you to think of these questions. And one of the things that what Jesus is asking us to do in this passage, is to slow ourselves down, but to enter the world of mindfulness, to be mindful mindful again of what's important think of these questions are you healthy right now at this moment not yesterday or if you're going to be healthy in the future but at this moment in time are you healthy in this moment in time do you have enough to live on in this moment in time, are your children well? In this moment in time, do you have a, a vocation, an occupation? In this moment in time, can you make a positive difference in someone else's life? I'm not talking about what you did yesterday. I'm not talking about worrying about tomorrow because what Jesus said, sufficient is today and its own worries, its own troubles, its own obligations. Tomorrow will take care of itself. So what are you mindful of at this moment? We do that in prayer. We do it by slowing ourselves down and allowing the Holy Spirit kind of calm our souls and maybe empty the monkey chatter in our head that we can be mindful and grateful of what we have been given and I think that is one of the important lessons that we learn 
is to practice a life of mindfulness. It's a time in which we give God this moment, not our worries and concerns. And when you give God this moment, God will reveal to you what life is all about. And those worries that once were tearing you apart inside will drift away. Now, I understand that many of us struggle with anxiety, and it's sometimes it's a medical condition, and you need to do what you need the doctor tells you to do, but there's a spiritual way to calm oneself and to put, again, our lives in their proper perspective. Are you willing to go on that journey? Uh, another important thing we learn from this passage, and the one way we can defeat worry, is that we do the right thing. Jesus again says, So do not worry about again, what you will wear, what you will drink, what you will eat, what you will wear, for the Gentiles, the pagans, run after all of these things. And your Heavenly Father knows what you need even before you ask. But seek ye first. Here's the key in terms of righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and everything will be added unto you. Amen to that. Everything else that God promises for you will be given to you. Now, that does not include praying for uh, a, a, a fast, uh, fast uh, sports car. God doesn't answer those prayers. What concerns God is your health, your spirit, your soul, and how you're going to be an instrument of God's peace and love and justice. To the people around you. You see, righteousness is a key word in the formula for defeating worry. Now, many people worry because of a sense of guilt. They worry about things that have happened in the past, and they worry about a mistake they have made, a, a person they have hurt, Perhaps they did something wrong that broke the law. You know, we all, the truth is, we all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. And one thing about guilt, it reminds us of our mistake. But when we allow guilt to take over, and it leads to fear and anxiety, then what happens is we become stuck. We fail to turn this, our, those burdens over to Christ. We fail to, to, to allow God to take that yoke off us. That we can live a life of freedom where we don't have to be afraid of being punished for a past sin. Why? Because God is love. And perfect love casts out all fear. It says that in First uh, John chapter 4. So it's in God's love and righteousness that we are relieved of that guilt that keeps us shackled. So focus on God's righteousness. And that righteousness is about grace, compassion, mercy. And as God that applies that into our own healing, may we apply that apply that healing to others because the church that God in Christ calls us to be is not an organization that runs out seeking to punish but the body of Christ the body of believers seeking to imitate Christ as much as as we believe and hold on to God's grace, that is only part of the formula. 
The other thing God calls us to do, and we see this in the Sermon on the Mount, is that we take this blessing, we take this gift of grace, and we don't hoard it, but we share it. We offer it to others. That others may know of God's mercy and grace that lives through us. So when you hear these words of Jesus, tomorrow will take care of of itself sufficient as today in his own worries Jesus is saying to us don't worry be happy amen to that don't worry be happy it doesn't mean that we can't be concerned it doesn't mean that we have to keep our heads in the sand but what it does mean is that God is with us that God will never leave us, nor forsake us. And what God wants to do more than anything is to free us to live that life of happiness and joy. I want to play for you a video that many of you have ever heard. It's one of my favorites. It's Don't Worry, Be Happy by Bobby McFerrin. Now, Bobby McFerrin is, is a believer. He, uh, he is one who leads choir, a choir at his church, um, but he wrote this song, I think, maybe back in the late 80s, but it is really a testimony of what God can do for you. God bless you, my friends, and thank you for joining us in worship. Peace.